I ordered a couple of extra vats a couple of weeks ago, um, along with some 3DM ABS. Kudo 3D was out of the 3DM ABS vats in the US, uh, so they sent me a couple of extra regular V1 vats and then ship me a uh, V1 3DM vat from Taiwan. Uh, those arrived yesterday and along with the 3DM V1 vat, they also sent me a prototype or a, a test version of the new V2 vat, uh, which is what I've got here um, and have just made a, uh, made a print with. The V2 VAT, which has been eagerly awaited, um, Jonathan posted the forms indicating that they are faster and more durable, at least the adhesion of the film, uh, which is what everyone has been having trouble with, um, is much better with the, with the, with the new VAT. Um, and I've got one here. And I'll go through whoops, some of the differences, uh, which I think will um, most affect your cleanup process. The V2 vat has the same uh, thick, durable sidewalls as the as the. Uh, the V1 3DM vat. That means that these sidewalls here, rather than also being made of a thin film, like all of my uh, stock Kickstarter V1 vats, this vat has the thicker sides that will withstand the harsher resins. We still have uh, the same overall design, three solid walls, and we've got the FEP sheet sitting on top of a layer of uh, soft silicone. One of the big differences with the new vat is that the silicone part is much, much softer than the original V1 vat. The original V1 vat contained silicone that was about um, uh, pretty much the same hardness as all the other PDMS vats that are currently in use, uh, which is to say they are uh, about the hardness of silicone encapsulant for solar cells. And these things are optically clear. Um, they let UV through because you want the UV for encapsulating solar cells. And they're also very, very tough because they're designed to protect your solar cells for 20 years, uh, they claim, like for Silgard or for or for QSIL. Um, and that's the vat, that's the stuff that is typically used in uh, PDMS vats today, like for the B9 Creator, for the Form 1. Um, and that is the stuff that, and the, uh, the original silicone was about the same um, level of hardness. This silicone is way, way softer. Um, and also way, way stickier than the original uh, V1 vats. The V1 vats, you would say that this silicone is like pretty much not uh, sticky at all. Um, in the V2 vat, um, the silicone is quite sticky, and that should hopefully address many of the issues people have had with the um, FEP pulling up. Uh, because this will greatly enhance the adhesion between the silicone layer and the FEP layer. It should also improve um, our separation forces because this being softer should release the vacuum more easily. Um, I, I haven't really done side-by-side -side comparisons with calibration parts between V1 and V2 vats to really compare the difference, but from my minor experience, releasing um, failed parts from the vat using the good old 
uh, plastic razor scraper, <laughs> the um, it is much easier to get failed parts off of this vat. I just push a little bit. And actually, if I push down a little bit, because it'll squish the silicone, that'll release the vacuum force, and I can pick up the part easily. Um, there are, in fact, many parts that I can grab with my fingers now um, and pull them off without having to use the razor scraper. And so I'm uh, cleaning out my vat. Um, I got a nice email from Jonathan uh, when I asked whether it'd be okay to post a video of this. Um, and he said that uh, it would be fine. Um, that Ted also wanted to make people aware of two additional things. Um, the first is that when they clean their vats at Kudo 3D uh, for their testing, um, they'll usually rest it against an object um, and let the excess resin drain down to the bottom. Uh, so they'll set it uh, maybe, you know, like as an example here, I, I don't know if, it, if it'd be a good idea for you to rest this against your printer, but you know, like rest against your print, rest against something at an angle and then let the resin drain down. I use the squeegee so there's not that much to, to really drain down to the bottom. And the second thing, which I think um, there was a thread in the forums about, is that we, they also don't clean the vat after every single print. Um, they recommend, uh, they mentioned that in their test prints, they only clean the vat after each print only for the, the 3DM, the most reactive resins. For the Maker Juice and the Spot HT, if they were planning to print with the vat again and with the same resin again within about two days, they would just leave the vat like this. And I've actually done this before also. I've gotten lazy when doing some of my test prints and kind of cleaned up here but then not rinsed off the vat and kind of left it in the printer with about um, this much resin in it. Um, and then I just poured resin in the next day and, and it was totally fine. Um, and so I'm actually going to clean this out thoroughly because I'm going to be trying out uh, for my uh, next trial uh, some water clear resin I got from Venus Creator. Um, but there are a few things that I wanted to mention about cleaning this vat that is a little bit different than you might be used to with the, with the V1 vats. The most important thing about cleaning the V2 vats is not so much your procedures with swishing around, um, swishing around uh, soapy water or whatnot. Um, that remains the same. Um, you can hit it with some isopropyl rubbing alcohol if you want. Um, it's not necessary. But the biggest thing you need to be worried about is making contact with this silicone layer on the side. This, the silicone layer around the edges is very, very soft. Um, if you look here and you may not be able to see it. Um, even in 4K, you may not be able to see it. But when I touch it and pull up, that silicone is real, real soft. Um, you really do not want to touch the silicone edges, the part that's not covered by FEP. You don't want to touch that with um, anything. Um, some lateral motion with the soft scraper, I haven't had a problem with that. Um, you do have to be careful not to catch anything particularly I don't want to start scraping like in this direction from the top because there's a, a pretty wide gap here and there's a wide gap here so I don't want to scrape uh, from starting on the sticky silicone and scrape onto the FEP vat rather I always want to be going kind of um, mainly scraping the FEP vat and maybe going over the edge a little bit kind of like this or scraping off um, because the silicone is soft enough that if you're too rough with it, um, you can sweep silicone onto the vat or pick it up on whatever you're cleaning with. You don't really want to sweep the silicone onto the vat accidentally because you'll notice there'll be a big streak on it that then you'll have to kind of clean off. Of course, this is FEP, so stuff isn't going to stick. Um, but you're going to have to clean off any silicone that you dislodge from the vat. Uh, and that's, of course, not good for the vat layer either because eventually if you dislodge too much, then you might get to the bottom. 
So you really don't want to make contact. You don't want to touch any touch this uh, the silicone edges around the perimeter with anything. And in particular, what you don't want to touch it with is a cloth. You don't want to touch it with the cloth you use to dry your vat if you use a cloth to dry your vat if you're using a lens cloth to buff your film to a perfect optically clear mirror shine you don't want to touch that soft silicone with a piece of cloth accidentally because that cloth has a rough surface you make contact with that cloth you're gonna um, stand a good chance of pulling getting that cloth stuck into the silicone and then you have to get it out very carefully and if you're buffing, you gotta be careful not to pick up any silicone into the buffing cloths, because then you'll wipe silicone all over the all over the surface, which then you're gonna have to get off. You don't wanna do any of that. Um, you mainly, if you do any wiping, you really wanna stick to wiping only the part of the film that's actually used for printing, right? Because that's the only part that matters. Um, if you're even that, um, if you're really that concerned about cloudiness. Um, and so if you, for instance, and let me uh, turn on my projector for a moment. So if you've got your projector on and your calibration grid going, With the calibration grid grid going, you can see which parts might actually get printed on, right? And it's not even remotely close to the edges of the of the vat. Uh, okay, so in the camera you might not really be able to see it, but the the main thing is there is no reason to get the entire silicone surface um, perfectly clear. All you care about is the parts you're printing on. And of course, since the quality of the print along the edges is kind of not so great anyway because the focus goes out, particularly in this corner here, um, you really don't need to, and you really shouldn't, um, try to get that, um, that, uh, that vat you know, totally perfect. And so now I'm gonna go finish off cleaning this vat uh, before I do another run with clear. So now I wanna be real gentle. Got my Dawn here. I used up the clear ivory I was using before, so it's blue now, because this is genuine Dawn. Carefully take, use the squeegee. Because I'm going to be switching to water clear resin, I do want to make sure that I don't have any liquid resin left in here um, that will mix with the water clear. Um, so I do have, I am going to go perhaps and be a little more clean than I would normally need to if I were uh, simply going to, if I were expecting to come back a couple weeks later and use the exact same resin. So 
they wouldn't want to end up saying, hey, this water clear resin isn't water clear. It's kind of, it's kind of red. <laughs> but in reality, of course, it's because I was using red resin beforehand and not because there was any problem with clarity. So, IPA. Should have gotten all the red out. Drawing off the outside. And then without getting anywhere remotely close to the bottom, I wipe down a little bit of the inner walls. And then the part I'm gonna print is small. Dehaze the center. And that's it. Not touching anything around the edges. Stay clear of that silicone. And this guy, when it's dried out, will be ready to go.